I'm sure many of you can relate or have experienced this at one time or another. Racing heart, upset stomach, parched mouth, maybe even a headache, yes? But imagine experiencing all of that, all at once, every single day. Let me take you back to my first experience of feeling this way. I'm seven years old, my coat zipped up, my backpack's on, and it's time to leave for the school bus. Mom, promise me you'll be here when I get home. Essie, honey, my plan is to be here when you get home. But if for some reason I'm not, you know how to get in, and one of your sisters will be here. Mom, what if you die while I'm at school? Essie, that's unlikely to happen, and we just talked about this a few minutes ago. Right now, you've got to catch the bus. I love you, and I'll see you after school. But mom, what if you don't? That was when my parents realized I was not going to grow out of this, and they found me a therapist in hopes to get some professional help. This panic conversation was routine between my mom and me, all through first and second grade when I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. A disorder that presents itself as constant worry and stress so severe, it interferes with every part of your life, throughout your life. In fact, I still experience these symptoms, even as I stand here speaking to you today. Because of this, my parents never dreamed I would attend college, have a secure career, or even move out of the house for that matter. Heck, I don't know how they did it. While still carrying the same debilitating weight of anxiety, I managed to get my master's degree in special education from the University of Utah. I taught for nearly eight years. During these years, anxiety was still in control. It was in the driver's seat. Although I finally developed the courage to face my fears, I didn't know how to work with anxiety. I didn't have the skills to find my peace. So how did I do it? What gave me the boost to push beyond my fears? Honestly, it wasn't me. It was someone believing in me more than I believed in myself. Did you have someone who believed in you? For me, it was Kathy Hill. I was volunteering in a special education class and Kathy, a clinical instructor from the University of Utah, was observing. Before leaving, she slipped me her card and told me to meet her at her office at four o'clock that day. I left her office with instructions on how to apply to the U and a schedule already written out of what my next two years would look like. She knew teaching was where I belonged. She was so sure and enthusiastic about me, I started to believe in me. I didn't know it then, but this was the moment I started to use anxiety as an asset. My fears drove me to work hard through my studies and get my degree. In 2016, I was having a midlife crisis. Yes, at the ripe old age of 30. I made the one decision I felt I had control of, teaching. Let go of a secure career and move to Thailand to teach with my girlfriend, who is now my wife. Dropping everything and moving to Thailand was terrifying. Our first month living there, we attended a Vipassana retreat run by Buddhist monks. <laughs> I'll never forget the shock I felt and the look on my girlfriend's face when we learned it was actually a silent retreat. We didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Our days looked like waking up before 5 a.m. and beginning meditation. No phones, no reading, no writing, and no eating after the unholy hour of 12 noon. We would meditate all day, averaging about 14 hours. When you're in meditation and focusing on your breath, you let go of the things that keep your mind busy, letting go of the anxieties that control you. In Thailand, I was able to see the simplicity of life for the first time. What I experienced in those five days changed the trajectory of my life. I walked away with an awareness that I can never unsee. And I gained a tool that could relieve anxiety, even if just for a moment. 
the breath. Bringing my attention to each inhale and exhale during those debilitating moments of anxiety provided calmness and clarity. After a year in Thailand, we returned to the States. I had a new frame of mind. The anxiety was still there every single day, but I continued my meditation practice and each day I found a little more control, a little more peace. I mentioned I started therapy in the second grade. However, it wasn't until my early 30s when I found a therapist who was perfect for me. I'll never forget the day she said, remember Essie, you are clinically diagnosed with anxiety. It is not going away. But anxiety is something you have. It isn't you. You are not anxiety. She taught me to bring awareness to anxiety and tell it it couldn't always be the driver. I had to consciously tell it to take the back seat so I could push through my fears. This was a game changer. Being able to separate myself from anxiety and learning to work with it gave me the freedom to step into my fears in a whole new way. I began to see more clearly how to use anxiety as an asset. Today, I work for the state's largest LGBTQ civil rights organization. <laughs> I never imagined this in my wildest dreams, but not because I didn't want to, but because I didn't think anxiety would allow me to. So when a position opened up, my wife convinced me to apply. What was there to lose? I utilized the tools I had learned throughout all my years. My therapist coached me through applying. I practiced the meditation tools I learned in Thailand, and I had people encouraging me who believed in me more than I believed in myself. To my surprise, they hired me. I vividly recall sitting across from my new executive director at my first day in the office. Once again, I was anxious beyond belief, but my fears began to settle as I listened to him talk. He spoke of the importance of seeking understanding and building relationships with people who have different beliefs and opinions. This was the next step in facing my fears, letting go of being right, proving points, changing people's minds, and starting to see the humanity in people. At that moment, I knew I was in the right place. I knew I was going to be doing a lot of things that scared me and challenged me, but if I could lean in with curiosity and be myself, that was enough. I'm still on my journey of growth and learning. I don't think that ever ends. I sure hope it doesn't. I still get a racing heart, upset stomach, a parched mouth, and sometimes headaches. But now I can clearly see anxiety as an asset. It has challenged me to step into opportunities I could have never imagined. I mean, I'm doing a freaking TEDx talk. It has made me stronger because now I tell it where to go. Anxiety, you need to take the back seat because I am the driver. <laughs>